Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Internet, telecommunication, and energy are the lifelines of modern society. And they all rely on a critical infrastructure that lies deep beneath the ocean's surface. Underwater cables. These massive cables stretch for thousands of miles, carrying information and power between continents. But what happens when these cables break or fail and communication grinds to a halt? Underwater cables, also known as submarine cables, are special cables laid on the seabed to connect different continents and countries. These cables are essential for global communication, allowing us to transmit data, voice, and video information across vast distances. The submarine cables work by using optical fibers or copper cores to transmit information in the form of light signals. These light signals carry enormous amounts of information with minimal signal loss. However, these cables can be damaged, causing disruptions to the global economy. Repairing these massive cables deep underwater is a daunting task that requires a specialized team of experts and advanced technology. In complex environments, cables are repaired by professional divers using a special system called the habitat. After locating the damaged area, the engineers submerge the habitat in two halves. The bottom shell goes under the cable and the top shell is clamped onto the bottom half. The water is then evacuated to provide a dry working environment. The habitat's door has rubber gloves for divers to use while repairing the cable inside the chamber. The habitat is equipped with a repair system and the necessary tools to cut the damaged part and rejoin the cable. Throughout the repair process, the divers constantly coordinate with the surface team to monitor the humidity and pressure inside the habitat. Submarine cables can also be repaired on the surface using highly advanced vessels known as cable-lying ships. Once a fault is identified, the cable-lying ship navigates to the location and deploys remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, to assess the damage. The team then repairs and tests the two cable ends one by one. Afterward, a splice closure is used to join the cable sections together. Once complete, 
The ship lays the cable back into its original position. The production of submarine cables is a complex process that involves several steps. The first step is creating the cable's core, which is made of a series of conductors insulated with various layers of materials. Next, the cable is wrapped in a protective layer and jacketed in steel wires. The cable is coated in layers of polyethylene and other materials to protect it from water and other elements. Finally, the completed cable is tested for electrical conductivity, insulation resistance, and other critical parameters before being spooled and shipped to its final destination. Ensuring the safety of marine life with regard to these cables is crucial. Hence, various experiments and initiatives have been undertaken, such as the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, BOEM, Crab Experiment. The Crab Experiment involved determining whether electromagnetic fields generated by submarine power cables impact the migration patterns of crabs in the Chesapeake Bay. After analyzing the data, the study found that crabs were not deterred by the presence of the cables and that the cables did not have a significant impact on their movement. Such experiments are essential to protect marine life and implement measures to mitigate any potential harm. In recent years, underwater technology has seen significant advancements, enabling groundbreaking research in environment and energy efficiency. One good example is Project Natick. Initiated by Microsoft, Project Natick aims to investigate the feasibility of using underwater data centers to solve the increasing demand for cloud computing resources. These data centers are housed in specially designed underwater capsules or data center pods. The capsule is laid deep underwater and uses natural cooling and renewable energy sources to power its operations. Onshore data centers face several challenges. Oxygen, air, moisture, and temperature fluctuation cause correction and might lead to failure. To tackle these challenges, Microsoft removed oxygen from the capsule and replaced it with nitrogen. They then dropped the container underwater, where the temperature is cool and stable. This reduces energy consumption and failure rate and enhances reliability.
Tests over Project Natick have proved that this solution has a one-eighth failure rate compared to onshore data centers. In addition, the capsule is 100% powered by renewable wind energy through subsea cables, making it a perfect example of a sustainable project. On the other hand, underwater labs are increasingly being used to research reefs and monitor their health. These labs provide a controlled environment for researchers to study the effect of climate change, pollution, and other environmental stressors on reef ecosystems. Aquarius 2010, for instance, is a project led by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, to study the effect of climate change on coral reefs. The NOAA utilized an Aquarius underwater laboratory located off the coast of Florida as a base of operations. The laboratory was staffed by a team of scientists who spent 10 days underwater studying the reefs. Highly skilled divers were able to collect data and make observations in the field. The divers conducted visual surveys of the coral reefs, took water samples, and performed other tasks that required direct interaction with the reef ecosystem. The combination of data collected from both inside the Aquarius underwater laboratory and from direct observation in the field by divers, allowed the research team to gain a more comprehensive understanding of the impacts of climate change on coral reefs. The hyperbaric chamber is another innovative solution that allows operations underwater. In Hong Kong, the Hydrokarst Group uses this innovation to maintain and repair the tunnel boring machines TBM uses in the city's massive infrastructure projects. This technique involves placing divers in a pressurized chamber that mimics the pressure conditions of the deep sea environment and enables saturation divers to safely acclimate to the conditions and conduct maintenance and repair operations on underwater structures for an extended period of time. Hyperbaric chambers are equipped with life support systems and communication equipment to ensure the safety and well-being of the divers. As technology advances and the demand for connectivity and green energy grows, Submarine cables will continue to play a critical role in shaping our world. However, 
The installation, maintenance, and repair of these cables are complex and requires specialized teams and advanced technology. That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.